Good afternoon, my name is Jensen Blake and today I'm looking at Shopkeep, a medieval shop simulator where you run a shop that sells weapons and items and equipment to adventurers so they can restock and then go back out into the wilderness to slay their monsters. Let's hit play game and have a look. So we get to name our shop. What would be a good name for a medieval shop? I know, how about ye oldy... Apparently I can't spell. Perfect. Create shop. So here we are in my shop and good grief the mouse sensitivity has been turned up high. And oh my goodness you can see me now. Full disclosure I have played this game before quite a long time ago in its development and this has changed dramatically. For starters that is me. Now I was aware I could change my character but I didn't realise that I'd be very visible in the game. Right, let's pause while I redesign myself and make myself look how I think that I should look. Now that's much more like it. A beautiful white costume and quite frankly a dashing hat. So, I've also adjusted the mouse sensitivity so I can actually play this game. This is our shop. Something here keeps trying to give me a message telling me to press 5. Press 5 to see if an item is a seasonal one. What, this chair, this desk. I... I have to say, I'm very impressed. I appear to have a house. So this is my house. I suppose we should name my character. My character is, well, let's call him Jensen. So this is Jensen's house. That deer must have hit the wall at a hell of a speed. Hmm. Okay, well, we better get on with things. Now <laughs> that is simply fantastic. Look at that. Not only, not only do, is there a beautiful welcome sign just the first thing that people see. They also see my logo. That is just brilliant. I'm very impressed with that touch. So this is the village. We should have a quick look. I'm not sure. Ah. Appear to be some trees growing in tango. Ha. Huh. Oh, what does this say? Under construction, Shopkeep Developers Inc. Oh, and I can't walk through that. I only say I can't walk through that because it turns out that my front door is an illusion. Presumably to confuse the criminals I can just phase through to the other side. My goodness I'm trapped. So I walked through the door of my shop. This is my shop by the way and immediately I am trapped inside and I think that's because as the giant text in the sky says I need to now build my shop. Awesome. Well let's have a quick look around first and see what we've got to work with. So we have a back room and presumably here at the front is where we'll put out all of our display stands selling our shiny magical merchandise. We have quests, hot items, hot, with some unnecessary capitalization. We'll let that off just this once. We have a chest and we have a delivery area. Press F to sort through your personal chest. With some very stretched sprites. Hmm, that's exciting. Press F to travel between your personal house and the back room. I can teleport? Oh, oh, I see. Oh, oh I have a secret passage. Mm. Is that in case I have to go admire myself in the mirror in the middle of a working day with my... I'll come have a look at myself with my beautiful peg legs. Oh, oh, and that dashing smile. No man or woman could resist a man with a smile like that. And look at my abs! Good grief! Ah. Oh. Well, that's simply fantastic. I might stand here for a while. So, it's time to start ordering some items. Now, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, I have 60 gold with which to start my marketing empire. Now, I have played this game before, and the approach I took last time was to become a sort of potions conglomerate. I specialised in selling thousands upon thousands of health and mana potions, and that worked. It was a viable strategy, but it was also very, very boring. I don't want to be boring, I want to be ambitious. So on this run, I'm going to attempt to buy interesting things. Oh, I, I, ooh, now I take that back. As soon as I say that, I take that back because they've added new potions. Wild growth potions, presumably makes you grow in a wild way. And obviously frost and fire resistance potions. Hmm, that's, that's very interesting. Well, I've abandoned my principles. I'm going to become a potion seller once more. So let's have a wild growth and a fire resist. That's 50. Is there anything? 10? My save and a health potion. Perfect. I can't actually see 
because it's trying to make me read the ordering tutorial. Be right back! And we're back, having disabled every tutorial this game has. <sighs> now, I know that tutorials are very helpful and they're very important things when you're learning to play a game. However, having them intrusive to the point that you can't actually play the game is a very good way to make sure that I, that people do what I just did, skip through all the tutorials and don't read them. So ladies and gentlemen, when I do not understand what I am doing, you'll have to forgive me. In this case, I think it was the game's fault. Let's order my potions. Place. Order. Ooh, order in progress. And I also, while we wait for this little revolving bar... Ooh, look at this. Ooh, I like that. As, as we wait for this revolving bar to uh, deliver our order, we can have a quick look at our skills. Apparently, I'm a man or a woman, according to that screen. Well, that's fair. And I have... Oh my goodness, I have all of this crap. What is all of this? Unlock Tier 1 Warrior. I, mm. So, apparently I can... Now, this is all very exciting. Can I afford that? No. Oh, oh god. Oh no, that's just my order having. Oh, I see! So up here, I, I'm levelling up as I do things. So I currently have 15 experience, or K. Ah, okay. Maybe XP and K are separate measures. And they're gonna unlock things for me as I go. Fantastic. There's a lot more in this game, credit to it, than there was originally. And there's now a lot more in my shop. Because over here, ba -ba 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 -ba, we have had a delivery. Marvellous. Now, I have made a colossal, absolutely colossal error. <laughs> Possibly a terminal error. I don't think that I have any displays. Oh, it's, is it going to give me a free display? No. Costs for gold. Well, I'm buggered then really, aren't I? Hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the, <laughs> this is apparently the end of my shopkeep video, as I failed to buy anything <laughs> with which I can display my goods. Bugger, 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 bugger. Right, two minutes while I try and sort this. Okay, there seemed to be no way to sell things that I'd already bought, but through the magic of editing, ba ba da ba, we now have two pedestals. And, in fact, we now only have two potions. So, we have a fire resistance and a frost resistance. Now, decisions like this in the early game could be really crucial. We have to decide which pedestal we're going to put each potion on. Exciting. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, let's put the frost there. And the fire there. And it's telling me I'm going to make profit zero. And that is, of course, because I'm selling them back at exactly the same price that I bought them, which isn't particularly clever marketing sense, is it? So let's see. Can I, through hammering the keys at random, manage to work out... Oh, I should have read the tutorial. Should have read the tutorial. Can I manage to work out, or remember, how to increase the price? Press what? Press something to... Imprint item in your hand into this spot. No, no, I, I no, I, I'm fine with that. Thank you. So clearly, there should be some key for this. Ah, aha, aha. So, logically enough, plus and minus are increasing the price. So in the bottom right, you can see the price I'm going to be selling them for, and indeed the price I bought them for, which is nice, and the percentage markup. Presumably, if I sell it for too much money, no one's going to be interested in buying the thing, and too little money, I'm an idiot. So I think I'm a greedy bastard. So I'm going to sell these things for 175%. Round right about the same as Waitrose. And same for you. Ha ha, fantastic. This is a great moment for Ikea. For it is the day that we first open the doors to our shop and allow the horde of customers to pour in and purchase our two potions. I'll take a deep breath and prepare myself for the rush. Okay. That was a little anticlimactic. I was rather expecting there to be some people in the streets, but I suppose maybe it's early morning. There certainly doesn't seem to be anybody around. There's a person! Hello! What? Why did I just bellow sit to stay? What are you doing? Jumping's not gonna make you any money. Okay. Press F to talk to Hugh Rednose the Warrior. Hello. Ooh, ooh, goodness. Hugh Rednose. Nothing, apparently. 
What are you carrying? Nothing. So sad. Well, fair enough, you. Okay, well, we probably shouldn't leave our shop unguarded. Uh, let's go back and do some shopkeeper things. Oh, look at Hugh. Hugh, I thought we were friends. Why don't you come in, Hugh? Hugh. You betrayed me, Hugh. You betrayed my trust. Go away, Hugh. Oh, oh, I've forgotten all about Hugh because Amanda Brindley the warrior is here. Amanda Brindley bought something. Ah, oh, I like you. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. So I, I made 46 gold. Despite the horrific markup, we're now making money. Fantastic. Uh, ah, I better go order some things quickly. Potions. Get your potions. Fire and ice potions. No. I remember this being a frustration I had with the game last time. There doesn't seem to be any way to tell the time. So although time is clearly moving, and I think the sun moves from one side of the world to the other, sort of as you'd expect, when you can't see the sun, it's very difficult to judge how early or late in the day. Hello, you were just talking. You, are you actually looking for something? What are you looking for? Nothing, apparently. I'm sure uh, you said something. Oh, good grief. Wow. Uh, wow, that's bright. Apparently it's now day. Good, good lord. Oh, there's the sun. Was that there the whole time? I don't know. Maybe the weather changed. Oh, oh, we have a man here who looks like he's making a beeline for the door. Oh, this is very exciting. What's your name? Bart. Well, Bart, I'm watching you, Bart. I hope you're going to make a purchase like an honourable citizen. And you're not going to make me have to remember. <laughs> How bloody dare you, Bart? How dare you? You cheeky swine! So clearly, Bart was not happy with the price of my potion. And it is a bit exorbitant. Maybe he didn't particularly like the 175% markup. I think maybe we should lower our prices just slightly. Just, <laughs> just so that when Bart goes and tells his friends that, you know, that we're a horribly overpriced shop, that when his friends do come in here to sniff, we can say, well, no, actually, our prices are perfectly reasonable. You know? Bloody Bart. It's occurred to me I might be able to catch Bart. Where are you, Bart? Is that you there, Bart? I think that's you there, Bart. Is that you, Bart? And no, that's Sam. Sam Johnson the warrior. Where's Bart? Is Bart still here? Oh. You see, you almost look like Bart. Oh. Fucking hell. Jesus Christ. Bloody hell. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was only going to singe him. Honestly. I'm a murderer. It's just occurred to me that I've left the shop unguarded. Oh, and it just said I've sold a potion. There we go. Hello. Avrilavadas Johnson, the warrior. Thank you, Avrilavadas. You a Murloc? <laughs> oh, I've just realised I can f I can actually see the time in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. There is a time remaining, a countdown, and it's telling me what phase it is. In case I was blind. Oh, that's nice. Awesome. So I have one minute. Suddenly, I feel under so much more time pressure. I have one minute fifty in order to turn a profit and to cover the brutal murder I did earlier on, <clears throat> which we shall never talk about again. Okay, I've got 46, 45 seconds remaining. God, the time pressure suddenly is immense. I need to find somebody to buy my leather boots, because otherwise I'm going to end the day on only 14 gold, which is a bit less than ideal. See, ideally I want to have some ready cash in hand so that I can upgrade the shop a bit. Hmm. Well, Ye olde Ikea. We have diversified over the day that we've been open, but really, I don't think it's been as successful as I would have liked. Uh, it is very refreshing to be able to walk around outside. See, the last time I played this game, you were bound to your shop, unable to leave like some eternal torture. But now I can just amble around. I mean, I can see the entrance. There's only one door to my shop, so if anyone does try and steal from me, that's fine, I'll be able to see it and I can go over there and I can use my lightning powers to, um... <coughs> and, um... <laughs> and... Wasn't me! Nothing happened! You saw nothing! 
I'm sure I'm being penalised in some way for that, but I'll be honest, I really don't care. Because here we have Lewis. Lewis the warrior. Lewis, you are going to buy my boots. Oh, you are. A, and I've, a, I've unlocked an achievement. 10,000 gold. Well, 100 gold, actually. And maybe it's in thousands. Well, or hundreds, maybe. 100, 100 gold. Lots of gold. I think I will specialise in selling boots. Boots for the masses. I got them in new shoes on. Boots. It's also a fun word to say, boots. Someone should open a shop called Boots. Why is everyone running? What's happening? Oh my goodness! Okay, there seems to be some sort of volcanic eruption because everyone is panicking and running away. Is there something I don't know? Are there werewolves? Hello? Clara! I am leaving the shop. You're not in the shop! There's no wonder you're confused! Oh, so everyone's running away- well, everyone's running away home. Well, I better go back in the shop then, haven't I? And ladies and gentlemen, we have made it through one day, and reasonably well. We have our two pedestals, we have a couple of items, and we still have a, a whooping great pot. 56 smackaroos to spend on improving our shop overnight. Exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to ye olde Ikea. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, taking my inspiration from the famous furniture chain, I am going to root for my customers on a predetermined path through the store. No more browsing, no more making purchases on your own time, no, 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 you will walk where I tell you to walk and you will buy what I tell you to buy. I have to say, actually, I'm very impressed with this idea. So once I unlock some better furniture, my objective is genuinely to walk people in one route right around the store until they reach the end. And at the end, maybe there'll be some sort of medieval fantasy version of meatballs. Amazing! As day two dawns and the timer starts to tick down, I think we will leave it there, ladies and gentlemen. However, I think I will probably come back to Ye olde Ikea. You see, this is the type of game that you have to build up over a long period of time, so this type of short video isn't truly going to do the game justice. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to go away and I'm going to play this game some more. And once I've built Ikea into a shop worthy of the name Ikea, then I think I'll do another little video and we can have a look at the finished thing, the finished game, and maybe get an inkling of what this game could become long term. And I will say they have improved it significantly since I last took a look at this game. Perhaps there's even a little short series of videos here. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I was Jensen Blake. You were marvellous. Thank you very much. And goodbye.